adventurous travelers and friends and welcome back to a brag with the adventures video i'm your host rose and today we are on our way to key west we're taking a little consolation trip we should be in acadia national park right now but our van is having multiple mechanical electrical issues and we can't take it yet so it's super frustrating and instead we've decided to go to key west and go to dry tortugas and while we are on our way to Key West, we're going to hit up some pretty cool fun spots and I thought I would take you guys with us. So right now, actually, we are in Shark Valley um, and I've never been to Shark Valley before. I have been to Everglades National Park, but not the Shark Valley area. So I'm really excited to go check it out and to bring you with me. We just bought tram tickets, so I actually wasn't originally planning to come here, um, but I got hit with inspiration to make this video because I've driven down to the Keys four or five times now and there's always fun things along the way and I just thought it'd be a great idea to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. Um, and Shark Valley is a place that I've had like tagged on my Google Maps for want to go for a while, but I just haven't been. So when we drove by and I saw the sign, I was like, pull over. Um, and that's why we're here. And it just so happens that in five minutes, gotta get my water bottle, they are taking off on a tramp tour because it's about a 15 mile loop, seven miles down to get to the Shark Valley um, Tower and about seven miles-ish back. And I don't really wanna do that biking. It is a hot day. So um, I did the tram tour option, $27 each. And I'm grabbing my water because it's a two hour tram tour, kind of like an eco tour, but they do let you get off at the tower. So that's what we're getting ready for now. And uh, I'm really excited. Clearly this was a quick turnaround time, so it didn't take long before we were hopping into the tram. I would highly recommend sitting up towards the front because that's closer to the tour guide. All right, so we have the green light, you can go. Before I get started, I want to introduce our driver. Give, everybody give it up for Juan. He's Woo! going to be driving, obviously. He's going to get us back in one piece, hopefully. Now the Everglades themselves aren't always that majestic to look at, but it's the animals that you see that makes this so special. We have another gray blue. This is one of the most common birds out here in Shark Valley. You see them year round. That is the American alligator, very common out here. We have over a million alligators in the state. All the way out to that bay head, you will see a clump of dead leaves. Oh, yeah. really hissing. Oh, you hear that hissing? Yeah. That's that's the gator. That's mom. She's not happy. That clump. Oh. <laughs> She's definitely letting us know. She doesn't appreciate us being so close. Why? Because there is a nest right in front of that tree island there. You see that clump of that tile, that mound of dead leaves and twigs. That is a gator nest. That is her nest. By mid-August, mid-September, mid-September, the babies will hatch. This was the third alligator we saw. There's quite a few alligators here. And there are even is a crocodile that they've seen from time to time. By the time we went to the Shark Valley Observation Tower, it was raining, but we thought it was worth it to hop out and climb up to the tower. This tower used to be where they would be on the lookout for fires in order to put out fires until they realized that those fires were actually part of how the ecosystem regulated itself. What do you think, Michael, the tour so far? It's good to see stuff, which is the whole point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty relaxed. I'm glad it's uh, overcast right now. Yeah. So is it going to be really hot? It started raining. And normally I don't like the rain, but it's really let the heat go, which is nice. The way back from the observation tower felt like a lot shorter of a ride, but we did catch some amazing birds, including this blue heron eating a live fish. Now, it eats the fish whole, which is incredible. It would cause a lot of damage to the bird's throat. He's doing it! He's doing it! Down the hatch. Wow. Okay, back in the car again, back on the road towards Key West. 
It was awesome, the Shark Valley tour. I think it was actually such a benefit that it rained because more animals decided to come out and it really cut the heat down. So that was great. And we saw a mother crocodile defending her nest. And I learned the difference between anhingas when they're boys and when they're girls. So it was just a really fun time. Um, but yeah, back on the road. The only bad part about stopping at Shark Valley for a tram tour when you have a long car ride is you're gonna sit in a tram for two hours and then you're gonna sit in your car for more hours. So keep that in mind. Um, if it had been like much better weather, I might have tried to do the bike rental and get my legs moving, but it was hot when we started and then it rained. So I was kind of really glad to be on the tram. in the Keys now and we're about to pass John Pettikamp State Park. We're not doing this today but we've done this before. You can go and do snorkeling with them, you can hike around, check out their visitor center. It's a very beautiful state park and we went camping there once and I had a great time but not on today's trip will we do that but it could be good for your trip. Now John Pennekamp State Park is on Key Largo and there's kind of two parts. The actual state park land and then there's the coral reef um, like actually out in the water. Now you can go with the state uh, folks on a tour or you can go with a personal group out on a tour. I think if you wanted to you could take a day and camp here. I, I enjoyed camping here. They've got a little aquarium that you could go to to see all sorts of fishies, learn about what's in the water near you. You can swim or snorkel off the beach, although when I went the visibility wasn't that great. Or more impressively, and what I highly recommend, is to take one of those boat tours and go out and snorkel. Now, I went with key divers and I made a whole video about this, but we went and saw the touchdown Jesus and had a great time looking at the corals and looking at the amazing statue that's in place there. And yeah, it would make a great stop on your journey down. The next stop that I recommend on the journey down to Key West is Robbie's. This is on the Isle Murata Key, um, a little bit past John Pennekamp and it's a great spot for some cool experiences, good food, and good times. We just parked at Robbie's. Michael's never been here, but I actually went here with some girlfriends. It was super fun. I'm excited to take him because you get to feed these giant tarp on fish and you get to see, you know, manatees last time. I saw manatees and it was just really fun. And the, the, whole, the whole experience was like kind of chill, beachy, islandy, fun. And I just thought it'd be good to take him. And also, I'm like freaking starving. So, better to eat here than to wait two more hours before I get to QS. Now, Robbie's is kind of like an entire complex, but the first place I usually go is the Hungry Tarpon Restaurant so that I can get some food. You can see it has money all over it. It comes from this old myth about um, sailors who would leave uh, money at the bar they like to go to in case their ship sunk or something, and then they could come back and be like, oh, my money's already here, so I have at least a drink. I think that's what it's from. You can let me know if I'm wrong in the comments below. They've got pretty good food. I wouldn't say it's like the best in the whole world, but it's a solid meal and I really like the blackened fish. And it's more the ambiance and the experience that this place is known for. Because once you're done eating, you could head over to the Robbie's other portion where you get to go out on the dock. You do have to pay and they only accept cash, so keep that in mind. And they'll give you a bucket of fish if you pay for it so you can go feed the hungry tarpon. Now I will say, having been here multiple times, sometimes it's crowded and the fish are super ready to, to bite and other times the fish are a little bit full. I think it depends on what time of day you're there and those sorts of things. But regardless, it's super fun. <laughs> this guy's really waiting. He can see. He can see. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Reach down. <laughs> hey, look at him. He wants it. Yeah. Give it to him. <laughs> Is he gonna take it? Yeah. 
Now, like I mentioned, it's not always just tarpon that you find here. You can see some sharks over there, and on the other side of this pier, there was a manatee that I'll show you in just a second. Now, this was on a different day. Michael didn't get to see those animals when he came, but I saw those with my girlfriends. So you never know quite what you're gonna get. Okay, guys. We had a wonderful dinner at Robbie's and we got to feed the tarpon. We did a tram tour at Shark Valley and I told you about the options to snorkel at John Punnicamp, but it's obviously getting a little dark here and so we're gonna finish our drive down to Key West. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me and I hope if you go down to Key West, you have some fun. I also did another video on cheap things to do in Key West. I'll link that up above. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Bye travelers.